Oh! Oh, that's it. I'm going there. What? Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Generic intro into that goes. We're here back with another kill count. And today, we're continuing the Alien Saga with Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection. For some reason, Thanks Killing is mixed in between those. But that'll be next week's video. We're going to be skipping it for now. We're just going to be doing Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection today. Last week's video was Alien and Aliens. I have never seen any of these movies. So, that was my first time ever experiencing, I guess, the Alien Saga. You can check my reaction to that video. I'll leave it right up there. Also, link down below in the description. Also, in a place on my channel with all my other kill counts. Go in a chronological order. Most of them are movies i have never seen or never seen or heard anything about but we're learning about the aliens i do read our comments leave some down below also shout out to the patrons they get the videos day early at love to have a paywall channel could not do this if it was not for them three dollars a month get you all my reaction videos a day early and go so far in supporting the channel so i really do appreciate all the patrons everybody watches this video we just hit 90,000 subscribers we're on the march for a one, or t 100 000, which we need another 10 000. i'm trying to do it before my birthday in july so we have a little under three months to do it so it's gonna be really really tough but if we could do that that would be amazing Amazing, but thank you so much for being here and let's go ahead and jump into alien 3 all right so we're doing alien alien or alien 3 in alien resurrection today we're skipping Welcome things killing until we next week the victims in all our favorite horror movies i'm james a janice and today we're talking about and i've alien never seen 3, any of these released movies in 1992 after years of five years before now. i was born the first two alien movies are masterpieces this one is not. It's a real weird amalgamation. So apparently the chest burst scene, ideas, and the actors people weren't behind told the about it. Trying to control what the movie was. Wow. Director David Fincher basically disowns the thing. And although there's a special edition assembly cut that's disowns very it. different and probably better, I'm using the theatrical cut for this video. Of course. So we can all see a lot how of much comment about this that. was when audiences saw it in theaters back in 92. Alien 3 marks another tonal departure from its predecessors, eschewing most of the action and sci-fi elements in favor of nihilistic melodrama. That it follows Tywin Lannister? finds herself stranded with an alien on a prison planet turned foundry populated by a bunch of murderers and rapists all of these dudes have shaved Actually, heads just and barely any personality game for like which is a huge time. bummer coming off the colorful cast we had in the first two thankfully they're just as good at dying as the memorable folk from those movies so let's get to the kills do they have easier to yell names though the movie begins with a problem. In between opening credits, we see that an alien egg somehow made it onto the Suako, the ship from the end of Aliens. A face hugger is born, and in the process of mm. hugging some face, something happens to it that causes it to bleed and create smoke. Where there's smoke, there's fire, and the fire sets off an Let alarm on the ship that the drops all the cryo beds into an EEV, an emergency escape vehicle. The EEV is oh. jettisoned from the Suako and hurtles through space towards Fury 161, a work study planet for aggressive double Y chromosome criminals where it crash lands in <laughs> a body of water. A handful of the planet's inmates discover the shuttle and realize that one of the occupants is still Double alive. They why? take Ripley's body into the med bay as the movie verifies the death of the other two human evacuees. First up is Newt in a cold-hearted death that upset plenty of people. She apparently drowned in her cryo bed from the fire system sprinklers. Right off the bat, oh. Alien 3 is like, nah, I don't care about them other movies, man. Corporal Hicks is also classified as dead and paled by wreckage during the crash landing, but interestingly enough, the video game Aliens Colonial Marines reveals this wasn't actually Hicks, but a dude named Turk who woke Hicks up at one point and snuck uh -huh. into his cryo bed shortly before the EV launch. Alien lore, man, it's extensive. The prisoners also find Bishop's Why? body That's so as random. salvageable, but I'ma hold off on adding him to the count right now. As they move the EV with a crane against some Wizard of Oz looking effects, there's a dog <laughs> yap 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 away at something, and it turns out it's the face hugger, still alive and looking for faces to hug. Watch out, little dog it. Inside the yeah, facility, no, Superintendent Andrews, the warden of this place, gives a big announcement to his crew of inmates about the shuttle are crash. Are they all bald? The survivor is a woman. Oh, oh, a woman. They're all clamoring because they haven't seen a woman in years. And in a series of relentless low angle shots, we find out they've uh. taken a vow of celibacy, as prisoner Morse explains, which is a part of the uh. religion they follow, within which prisoner Dylan is kind of a spiritual leader. More low uh. angles also introduce us to the other two staff members alongside Andrews, his assistant Aaron and medical officer Clemens, played by Tywin Lannister himself, <laughs> Charles Dance. When Clemens goes Charles to Dance. More medicine he, yeah, delivery, he's he also an imitation game. Usual who, what, where. He tells her the deeds, and when she asks if the others made it, he says, no, because a Lannister always shakes his head. Ripley jumps out of bed in her birthday suit to go check out what happened on the ship. Clemens gets uh, her some clothes and escorts her to the EEV that they're hauling in. Ripley rummages and there's around gonna be a until she spies with her crazy blood eye a burn on the side of Newt Stasis pot. She wants to see the body, so Clemens takes her to the facility's morgue, where Ripley presses uh, him to do an autopsy under the guise of looking for communicable diseases. You know, like, uh... Cholera. Yeah, huh? Clemens, ain't you ever play Oregon Trail? With some pleading, he haven't. obliges and cuts open Newt in an off-screen manner after the original version of the scene was deemed way too graphic by literally everyone who saw literally it. Literally everyone? everyone? <laughs> initial analysis. Chest. Open the chest. 
and Clemens follows through because a Lannister always breaks a chest. Ripley's relieved there's no chest burster inside, but before That's Clemens good. can ask what kind of prize she was looking for inside this little cracker uh, jack new, Warden Andrews walks in all pissed off that Ripley has been allowed out of the infirmary. Ripley insists uh, they cremate the bodies and Clemens backs her up, borrowing her life. Uh, yeah. An outbreak of cholera would look extremely bad Instead on the report. The warden relents yeah. and says they can go ahead and burn the bodies if that's, you know, good. that's what they're into. Meanwhile, it's another fine. inmate, Murphy, finds his dog Spike with a messed up face. Looks no! like the face hunter ended up getting a hold of that Rottweiler. Oh, that's and it. That I'm going clearly there. clearly a Rottweiler, not like a Doberman. I know dogs. And so we get a real weird cinematic treat when it comes time for the cremation, as Warden Andrews gives a speech with his face Something bad's superimposed gonna happen. alongside Clemens and Ripley over the other prisoners, all of it intercut with shots of the dog writhing around in pain. Really fucking weird. <gasps> Dylan overtakes the Warden's speech and gives a much more moving eulogy as the bodies of Newt and I guess that Turt guy are cast into flame. Right as the alien I don't know that's... this very bloody birthing no. process and pops out of that dog. This movie introduces the idea that the alien is genetically influenced by its host life form. So it's alien be a, features like a, dog. a quadruped alien known as a runner. Nasty looking thing. Yeah, gets a yeah. nosebleed at the funeral, so maybe that's why she feels the need to shower off, where she also shaves her head at the suggestion of Clemens to avoid the planet's lice problem. Her buzz cut does nothing they to have disinterest the inmates there who practically wet themselves at the sight of a lady in their midst. <laughs> Dylan tries to warn Ripley off by telling her that he and everyone else there is a murderer and rapist of women, but Ripley uh, is a cucumber. Well, I guess I must make you nervous. This seems to be good enough for Dylan, who simply warns her that they've got a good thing going right now and don't want any temptations to uh, ruin it. It's afternoon chores time, I guess, uh, and Murphy is scraping a giant exhaust pipe with a metal rake or something when he finds some nasty looking skin on the ground. Kind of oh, like no. back in the original. Then he sees something down a ventilation shaft and thinks that's Spike. Yeah, only if Spike's a freaking alien, oh, idiot. The runner spits I mean, some acid into Murphy's face, which causes him to fall and stumble down That's gonna shaft hurt a lot. I didn't even know had that decline. Straight into a giant nine-foot fan they have there, uh, which cuts him all to pieces. Clemens gives Ripley the best. A pretty Fury strong fan. One, how it, it used to hurt, be a huge prison labor camp until it was closed a few years back by Waylon Yutani. 22 of the inmates decided to stay there and do their religious thing, and so a staff of three custodians stayed as well to watch over them in the foundry. When he tries to get some info out oh. of her in return, she changes the subject. So there's real 25 hard. of them total. Attracted to me. In what way? In that way. Clemens takes her up on the distraction sex, and damn, Charles Dance, you looking pretty good. I guess a Lannister always trains his pecs. Andrews yes. yells at Clemens for letting Ripley loose in the first place and tells him that company <laughs> higher-ups gave him a call and told him to keep a close eye on Ripley. Ripley heads back to the Sulaco escape vehicle and rips out the ship's Also, the fact that the aliens aren't the bad guy in the company is crazy. crazy. It's just a little dirty. It's still good. It's still good. On her way back inside from the best dumpster dive ever, though, she's cornered by a group of inmates who attack her and hold her down against a railing so they can rape her. Luckily, Dylan enters the ring and knocks okay. him Box, then proceeds to beat the I shit might out of the would-be censor that word. Fight. He tells Ripley to uh, take off, but she makes sure to get her own licks in before she does. In another part of the facility, there's a trio of inmates doing measurements using, like, candles or something. This movie's not great at explaining shit to the audience. They notice apparently. some of the further place candles are getting blown out, so one of them, Reigns, goes to check it out, mm. expecting it to be just a prank bro from another inmate. Instead, it's, it's just not. a prank bro from the Xenomorph, who rears up and knocks him down, then eats him in the foreground of the shop. The other two prisoners, Do they see Bob that? Gollum, Do they hear the screaming? Reigns' body all bloodied and battered. Are that happens silently? Movie. When Boggs looks up towards the ceiling, the alien shows itself again, lifting him up to kill him in a way that sprays blood all over Gallic's face. Are you proud of yourself, Mr. Morph? Yeah, I bet you are. Gallic uh -huh. runs away to avoid giving the alien runner a hat trick. Ripley takes her dumpster <laughs> bot to a room where she can put some skin flaps back in place and hotwire him like a stolen Camaro. He comes <laughs> to and reads the SIM card for her, so she sits <laughs> right back and hears a tale, a tale of a broken ship that evac'd because a fire started from an acid uh. drip. From an acid drip. Then he asks Ripley uh. to just go ahead does, and deactivate Does he have a stutter? never be a whole robot again. Again. I'd rather be nothing. Ripley complies and shuts Bishop down for good, so I'll go uh, ahead okay. and add him to our list as the sixth a victim robot. of the movie. A robot Gallic counts. Is brought into the med ward, and while the warden thinks he just went crazy and killed Reigns and Bogs on his own, Gallic insists they were murdered by a creature. It's a dragon. Ripley pops out of hiding back up the dragon tail, but is met with the usual resistance from a man with authority. Andrews mocks her for the very idea of the xenomorph and tells her the company is sending a pickup to retrieve her soon. He also no, they're not. There are no guns anywhere on the planet. What? This is a maximum security prison, and you have no weapons of any kind. Fun fact, the no guns thing was actually a stipulation of Sigourney Weaver, who served as a producer on this movie and is very anti-gun in real life, despite admitting that it was fun to shoot some at a range with James Cameron. Back in the infirmary, <laughs> Ripley starts coming down okay. with a cough. Okay, so I mean, it adds drugs. an interesting aspect to While it. he's mixing up his cocktail, he delivers a monologue about his past, which is a real nice way for him to go out since he gets surprise killed no! by an alien, who grabs his head and lifts him up to head bite him. His body falls to the ground, clean as a whistle, so I guess I'm he doesn't shit gold after all. The weird-looking alien crawls up to Ripley and gets all up in her 
face mm. in what's probably the most iconic shot of the movie. He says hello twice, once with each jaw, but then oh. he pieces out with Clemens's body and leaves her to live. Why? Andrews has another company meeting where he tells the inmates about the whole Rains Boggs gala colour and when Ripley rushes in to interrupt him with breaking news about the alien, he tries to hush her up. But the alien no, drops yeah, I'm about to say. To of course, it's always the ones like, no, nope, there's no for all the prisoners to see. Like but the warden gone. The you're try you're to talking nonsense. Gets Aaron got. tries to take control, but the other guys say he's too dumb. After all, his nickname is 85 after his reported IQ. Dylan rejects his own nomination, saying he's not the officer type, and turns to Ripley to guide them instead. She starts brainstorming, but ain't nothing that works on this goddamn planet. As angry and Morse no explains weapons. to her in a not so pleasant manner, they settle on a plan to trap the alien in a nuclear waste containment room that was never used. And then they that... go check out a bunch of barrels of quinine acetylene. What is quinine acetylene? You ask. I don't know. Like it. Big stupid idiot you are. It's oh, a highly okay. explosive chemical. As inmate David, played by the late P. Possibly, explains to Ripley. Saw a drum of this stuff fall into a beachhead bunker once. The blast put a tug in dry dock for 17 weeks. Great stuff. Mm. In case anyone's confused about the plan, Dylan recaps the whole thing for us. You want to burn it down and out of the pipes, force it here, slam the door, and trap its ass? Yep. So and the then... inmates start spreading the quinite acetylene all over the ventilation shafts in the first of various schemes in this movie that involves uh. all these bald dudes getting outsmarted by an alien. Take this guy, Frank, who drops What's his ignition gonna... stick, but thankfully not all the way down. As he climbs uh. down to retrieve it, the and... alien sees him, and on his way back up, he gets grabbed and nommed uh. by the alien for another kill, the ninth of the movie. Now so the plane doesn't does work. does fall all the way down, and right onto some quinite acetylene. This starts an explosion that tears through all the chambers and incinerates a bunch of dudes. We see a number of guys fly around like they're in a stunt show Great. at Universal Studios, and when all is said and done, we have a parade of survivors walking around asking folks to bring out the dead. Dylan mentions that how the last many? body they find makes ten, which I'm assuming includes Frank, so I guess that's how many people die here. But in all honesty, well, did they get a corpse back sense, from Frank? They say multiple times that there are only 25 dudes on the planet. We've already seen five die, and there are actually 11 dudes still alive. Ripley's still not feeling they well, forgot so she heads to the okay. EV's medical scanner where Aaron helps her run this little Twinkie looking thing along a track. It reveals that she's a hostess with the mostess since she's got a chest burster inside. Oh no, Ripley, what? the nightmares have come true. And boy, this thing does not take after your good looks. Ripley has Wait, to get the satellite what? working, but when she wants him to tell the she rest has of the a team chest that's burster? on the way to turn back to avoid the alien getting out, he shuts the whole thing down since he wants to go home to his wife and kid. Ripley leaves him to go look for the alien by herself, and Aaron gets a message from the company saying they about to be there in Amazon Prime now. To uh -huh. Hold on to that, Ripley. Don't let go. Ripley's hunt leads her to what she Abs thinks is the yeah, alien, but when she smashes it open, it's just an oogie boogie pipe filled with ew, bugs. The ew, real alien ew, is bugs. there, turns out, but after he drops down to her, he apparently but lets it her won't attack he her runs to Dylan because, and asks yeah, him she has to a kill her because of her alien in utero, but he refuses with a pretty good reason. And if it won't kill you, then maybe that helps us fight it. Dude's got a point, so Ripley oh, has yeah. as long as he agrees to kill her after the alien is dead. The remaining survivors have a town hall Again, I don't know how they can remove that. a very theatrical that. looking set, where Ripley tells him the company is probably going to kill them all to get a hold of the alien. Just like Correct. they did to the Nostromo crew and the Marine mission. Dylan reveals the plan is to lead the alien into the metal mold and kill it. Here's with another plan. Magma. The inmates will be the bait. Sounds like some kills to me. After inmate Troy does some wiring to get a piston working, they set out uh, to get the alien into the piston chamber one? and seal it inside so they can push it into the mold and wash it with lava. The plan gets going and inmate Kevin finds the alien uh, feasting on a body. This kills who's? the mystery man that messes up all the counting logic since this okay. dude, apparently named Vincent, was nowhere to be seen at that town hall meeting. And yet but, here he is getting eaten. Oh, well, it kills a kill, right? The alien chases I, dude, Kevin through the mask The math is not mathing. First -person perspective. It climbs I guess they... The ceiling, and it's like this for I'm the guessing James minutes, is like their the worst nightmare. shot of the full alien body and the weird-looking effects for it. The plan results <laughs> in a lot of kills. The first is Troy, who kind of loses himself and rounds a corner straight into the alien. He screams oh, cool. and is killed off screen, it, and that's one less ball dude for me thing? to keep track of. Thanks, Troy. Next up is sadly David, when the alien gets the drop on him. One screen course, and a headlight always. later, this movie is sort of mighty fine actor, even if the role I associate him most with is Roland Tembo from Lost World. Kevin, the guy who found I the have alien no idea what he just said. Now I've finds the never alien heard on the ceiling and before. is attacked. Dylan comes in right away and pulls him down from the alien's feeding session, then drags him back into the piston chamber. Oh, it turns out it's all for naught, because Kevin bleeds out and dies. It's oh, not that's your fault, Dylan. Sad. It's not your fault. He tried. The alien peeks inside the chamber and bites into Kevin's body, so inmate Eric starts the piston up. But alien pieces out, so everyone and runs out to try to get him back in. Sorry, does this but, whole thing feel pretty Scooby Doo to anyone else? It does. He's running around in the tunnel. You, it, it, if two they had like funny and music with this, it would time be logic it out, hilarious. I've determined these two are inmates Eric and William. I don't know why it matters that I know this, but I feel like it does. Inmate Jude finds himself running from the alien of because course. he doesn't want to let her. Everybody into his split heart. up. Right when he's almost in the piston chamber, he gets nabbed and pulled back into the hallway by the alien in one of the bloodier kills of the movie. Morse and Gregor. Hey, yeah, no, this is big time Scooby Doo. What is it like the door thing? Where like go through one door and come out another one? Morse's face. Yeah, next time take this shit more seriously, fellas. Ripley shows up and starts teasing the alien with fire, then grabs his tail and plays a game of tug of war. Dylan and Ripley lure the alien and 
Mark's creepy fucking effects into the piston chamber, where Morse hey, seals hey. the final door to lock all three of them inside. The piston does its thing, pushing the alien back and back until it slams shut behind it, trapping the xenomorph is in the piston in the metal mold of the facility. Ripley starts climbing out a bit, but Dylan stays to keep the alien down there. The alien charges him and starts tearing him apart. I mean, it's says stuck really there. cool stuff like, "Is that all you got?" Morse is what, on top of the control of the boring machine, so Ripley tells him to go ahead. Pour it! Down comes the magma, covering the also, alien. Also, wouldn't it be hotter than that? Beautiful silver waterfall. I know some people don't like the lack of guns thing, but I like that it forced a more inventive solution. Yeah, but to also made it kind of scooby doo Although it turns out this plan isn't fully alien proof, as the metal casted menace leaps out of the lead pool and onto a platform where Wait, that was like molten lead. Dog. Ripley's all like, Which "Yo, you coming color. in hot there?" So she tells the alien to chill and gives it a cold shower. The temperature change turns the alien into CGI as it cracks. It turns it into up, CGI it once and for all. Boom, baby. I all mean, the inmates have been having. What would they have to be made out of for it to shatter like that? Facility and are greeted by Aaron with open arms. They immediately ask where Ripley is, and when they corner her in the foundry, the leader of the group reveals himself. Bishop. Ripley. But that's uh, not an android. It's a man, baby. Or at least but the android is a the copy of him. Bishop. He tries to tell Ripley that they're there to help her, but when he asks nah. her to trust him, she says no. She and Morse take a platform out over the lava, and one of the scientists shoots Morse in the leg. In uh, response, Aaron grabs a pipe and takes that's it That's not how you get my trust someone. Down by the most well-armed scientist in the galaxy. He falls off a platform to his death, leaving Morse as the only surviving original inhabitant of Fury 165. Now, Ripley oh, may not be on drag race, but damn, she know how a death drop. Because as Bishop begs her not to... <laughs> Hopefully the aliens are back gone for good. The lava pit. On her way down, but only in the theatrical release, a chest burster pops out in what's got to be the most confusing birth of all time. <laughs> that's a, 29th and is that a spawn kill? Movie. And regardless of how you feel about uh, this movie, uh, there's no denying this is an iconic moment in the franchise. Morse is led away by the company squad. Oh, so why did that much lead? Down entirely. End of transmission. Like I said, that, that's, one mess that's of a spawn movie, camping. also one with more kills than either of the first two. Oh, yeah, I'll show my work. Let's go to the numbers. Oh, there, is there like... There's like, what, 25 people on the- 29 people died in Oof. Alien 3, as well as a Rottweiler. Not no. The, the human victims include the only two female characters, Newt and Ripley, with the other 27 That's males, a crazy ratio. That's a very imbalanced gender distribution. At a runtime of 115 minutes, that comes out to a kill, on average, less than every four minutes. A much uh, quicker pace for this series than before. Four minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill it's gonna to be... Clemens. It's real quick, but it looks like a great practical effect of a shattering uh, skull. Plus, his death so early on took me by surprise. Dol uh, latest kill will be Troy, who well, just rounds a corner was he and is never big, seen again. Was Charles Dance that it. big of an actor Alien back then? was not well received and considered a oh. major downgrade to the first two films. I guess people like the guns. I'll try to do a video one day comparing the assembly cut to the theatrical release, but for now... Let's just finish off the original series with Alien Resurrection. Well, for some week. reason, until then, I'm James whoa. Agenese. For some reason, kill count. Thanks hey Killing guys, thanks got put in this. For Alien 3. I want to thank a couple of my patrons like Ryan Jabari and Jai James O'Malley. Also, I'm playing Delta Rune for the very first time. I started it last Saturday. I'm playing it again this Saturday, 5 p.m. today. It by just way. had a lot going up against it. Also, Charles Dance is awesome. Thanksgiving yes, is. is coming up. What are you guys thankful for? I'm thankful for all of you. Thank you guys Aww. so much for watching and being subscribers. See you next week. Oh. So now this is going to be Alien Resurrection. 1997, the year I was born. Okay, I'm as old as this Welcome movie. We had we to skip Thanksgiving, but that'd be next I'm James week. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Alien Resurrection. Released in 1997 and the final installment of the original Alien series. Wait, have they not so dropped Alien an Alien kind of movie in almost 27 years? Ideas. Resurrection oh, that's sure. Oh, from the, ground the lines. Down. The whole tone of the movie feels off, stemming from both a script written by Joss Whedon and the direction of quirky French filmmaker Jean-Pierre Jeunet. Oh, he's who French? Later Couldn't tell. Amelie, which is a great movie. But between Never all the snappy one-liners and music video aesthetic, it's hard to take this movie seriously. Plus, it practically ruins the Ripley character. And that Xeno-human hybrid at the end? Well, actually, I kind of like how balls crazy that thing is, so I'm not going to bitch about that. Taking place ah. 200 friggin' years after Alien 3, Resurrection follows a clone of Ellen Ripley, now infused with Xenomorph powers as she finds herself what? in the of yet another alien adventure. This alien outing features space mercenaries, crazy scientists, and swimming aliens. So let's just jump the fuck they in swim? and get to the okay, kills. Well. Okay. <laughs> the movie begins on the Origa, a research spaceship of the United States. Are these guys Systems pointing Village. them at each other? We see a nasty looking clone slug of Ripley while her voice gives a short narration that compares scientists to monsters. One of these science monsters right, well, is getting played by occasional Tommy Wiseau impersonator Brad Dorif, and he slits the clone Tommy torso Wiseau. open and surgically removes the baby chest burster. He puts the C-section burster in one of those bank drive through tubes and then gets permission from lead scientist Ren to keep the Ripley clone alive for further study. Everybody wins! Except the maybe C prisoner slash science experiment Ripley clone. She wakes 
wakes up later in style, sporting the hottest new bag fashion and some fresh new ink, the number eight on her wrist. And Why it looks like she's eight? got both style and substance, and she's an A-plus student, too. As in completely off our projected charts. Apparently, her style's oh. got some xenomorph genes mixed in. Because giving of the chest Giving her strength and the ability to remember things from real Ripley's past life. None of this is Wait, good news what? for the commander of the How do they the even General clone her? Do they have such her, a cartoon like, of a character that he's probably got Judge Doom chasing after him. He's concerned that a resurrected Ripley will get straight back to her fave hobby, trying to kill aliens. Aliens like the new specimen they've grown from that chest burster, another alien. Why are they this. trying the scientists convinced Perez to let them to have these aliens? Study. And after getting to what are they planning to do with them? The clone comes to a quick conclusion. She'll breed. You'll die. Ren enters as Ripley 8 asks about the company, and he informs her that Wayland Utani doesn't exist anymore. In fact, the special edition mentions that it was bought out by Walmart. And honestly, Let's getting rid Walmart. of Wayland Utani is another problem for me here. Why undercut the shadowy villain you've built up for three movies? Ren assures oh, Ripley that the actually... USM will house train the aliens and use their research for good, but we all know that's a bunch of horseshit. Headed towards the Origa is a They're group gonna of They're going to train the, Whoa, the aliens. Space Betty, bam, lam. It's a crew of six. Leading them is Captain Elgin, who sounds like he gargles gravel every morning. Don't cut thrust till about 600 meters and we'll give him a little scare. He's romantically involved with the pilot, Hillard, whose character development stops right there. Chris is the guy with some pretty sweet cuffling pistols. Dude, and he's second in command on the ship. He's Head straight out of Assassin's Creed. Paraplegic, who doesn't feel anything in his leg, which gun for hire Joe owner, played by Ron Perlman, goes at lengths to make fun of. All oh, that's not like nice. <laughs> What are you doing, Ron? His monkeying around bothers Hall, another mechanic played by Winona Ryder, who only recently joined the Betty Band. The Betty boards the Wait Origa and some great-looking effect shots, downstairs. and they make their entrance, looking back on the track for a little green bag. Perez meets with Elgin, where they have themselves some laser liquor, and Perez slides Elgin That's a cool. fast stack of cash. It's payment for the cargo the Betty brought. A bunch of people asleep in cryo chambers. See, the USM scientists what are, they doing? are gonna wake these folk up and give them a continental breakfast. But the only thing on the menu is Xeno eggs, face hugger side up. The eggs have a synchronized birthing session and get real nasty Synchronized. Runny. As the captives wake up and scream in terror. Oh, why they have to wake up? This basketball scene where Ripley 8 gets hit on by Joner before bouncing a ball into his balls like a baller. Now we get to see the full picture of the clone's powers. Her physical strength uh, is shown when she takes a weight plate to the face and kicks everyone's ass. It is completely ass fine. Okay. Her acid blood is revealed when it dissolves a bit of the floor. And her Harlem Globetrotting skills are proven on her way is out the door. Is she what they want? Where are you? Okay, well... <laughs> Fun fact, that shot was really made by Sigourney Weaver, although contrary How many to urban legend, take? it was not done in one attempt. No. Like dozens. Ripley's performance <laughs> of the mention perfect. of her name makes Call perk up, and then Gettyman wraps up the scene, teasing the eventual crossover series. Something of a predator, isn't she? He heads to his marigold maybe, out of Xenomorphs, and selects maybe one of the Maybe the thing that they want is her, and you know? And more closely, I mean... They're trying like to train them, but maybe they just want to make super and the alien end up making fuck me eyes at each other until the alien scares them with a head bite to the glass. In response, Gettyman blasts the alien with some liquid nitrogen. Oh, that's not the nice. alien takes the heart pretty quickly. We're a fast learner. Call gets punch drunk oh. and spills Joner's special brew, so he banishes her from the drinking table. It turns out she was just faking being a freshman, and she uses the opportunity to go the find Ripley 8 in her prison cell. She goes to kill her, but stops when she sees the incision scar on Ripley 8's chest. Apparently, Call is familiar with Ripley and the whole oh. parasite situation. You mean my baby? Yeah, Ripley. Oh, Ripley, no. Nasty alien baby. Ripley 8 then tries to play the knife game, but, uh... Oh, I've kind of done that before. Long. When Call asks what she is, Ripley I've, I've high -fived that knife Ripley, before. but Call ain't buying it. Wasn't fun. Ripley died 200 years ago. You're not her. I'm not her. She is not closest her. thing. Ellen Ripley's whole appeal was how relatable she was. Ripley 8's not relatable at all. She's just a cocky, shifty weirdo who's into touching faces. After calling and gets away calling from aliens Ripley, her babies. she's apprehended by Ren in the USM. They round up the others in the mess hall, minus Breeze, and tell them they're all about to die for Call's, quote, terrorist activities. Don't know why they don't just, you know, kill them then, but instead yeah, they give Christy that... enough time to deploy his Wild Wild West guns and go all Jim West Desperado That seems so cool. He shoots five guards in some music video shots, showing them that they don't want Nada. And while he's wicky wicky wild, what are these? Nada, Guard, reaction time was the bro just hole through a six guard a seventh guard holds christy at gunpoint but in a ridiculous video game bank shot christy bounces around off the ceiling that's for a just shot. to wrap up these first seven rule a helmet the there's no way it would have enough issue of no way it would have enough figure momentum. out a way to freedom two of them team up on a third and head bite it to death until it's lying in a bloody corrosive mess on the floor of their containment cell it burns a hole big enough for them to escape through and when Gettyman foolishly walks over and inside the gets hole, got he of course gets grabbed and pulled down when another guard is there anything their acid can't 
appears through. on the other side of the glass and tongue punches the punish button, spraying the guard down with liquid nitrogen, which yep. freezes him in place. His arm breaks Payback. off for a pretty great kill. Ah. Thanks for learning how to use those buttons, aliens. Behavioralism works. Paul yeah, tries to they taught him. The alien taught him well. The Betty crew, but an alarm goes off and interrupts her. General Perez wakes up in a cartoonish way and shows off his cartoonish shoulder hair, then yells at his crew <laughs> so to get aboard the ship's hair. evacuation pod. Looks like these things fit six grunts apiece, and one of them manages to get away successfully. But while they're loading the last one, an alien climbs up the side of it and slides into it like it's a DM, oh. where it then proceeds to murder the occupants yeah, with some bloody splashes against the window, you know, fish a, a shot reminiscent of Jurassic Park and gets pulls down a in. dude trying to escape. Yep. Perez takes a grenade and bowls it like he's fucking Fred Flintstone, and it yabba dabba drops into the pod right before it takes off. Then Perez cartoonishly presses the detonator to destroy in space? the alien inside. My kill count doesn't include aliens, but it will include cartoon characters, I guess, since after Perez realizes there's an alien behind him and is all like, oh, oh gosh, mm -hmm. he gets killed by a head bite to the back I of the mean, head. Wait until he's going on the list. At least this idea. is a fun take on this classic kill, since Perez has enough time to reach behind him and pull out a piece of brain from the wound. Fun stuff. Oh, Elsewhere, that the Betty crew is wandering that does around, and good. Elgin inexplicably separates himself from the rest of the group, maybe to go practice being handsome. He finds a sticky, icky gun, and mm. then the claw from below breaks the grady standing eye, causing How? him to fall into the floor. <laughs> an alien comes it? up behind him underground and kills him with a head bite through the back. That's still mm. a head bite, right? Since it's coming from the alien's head? I don't know, man. The Betty crew finds Elgin, but are forced to run away when the alien steps out and starts a chase in them. But then the alien is turned back by a sentry. Is it going to protect her because it's going to listen to One shot later and there's a hole in that alien's head and out from the ground comes a leather bound Ripley 8. She escaped her holding cell earlier when she used her acid blood to trip some wires and open a conveniently Ripley sized wall panel in her room. Uh, now she's in the center of action again and she's got some awful job. But she's not going to kill the, her child. You have to fuck to get off this boat. Hey, uh, Resurrection. Why you gotta ruin Ripley? She's trying to get off in such a hurry because Ren admits to there being 12 more aliens aboard the ship. Despite Call's concerns that Ripley might be playing for Team Alien, Christy insists that everyone there stick together to get off the ship successfully. That's, that includes that makes the sense. one USM grunt they spared, a guy named Stefano, who's played by Raymond Cruz, aka Chuko fucking Salamanca. An elevator Ooh. door opens up to reveal Bree, so they all have a happy reunion with him. And Ripley notes that the ship is moving. Turns out the emergency procedure for the Auriga is, is to auto pilot back to home base, Earth, which apparently isn't a popular destination these days. Earth. Man. Oh, wait, they don't want to go. What a shithole. To spare Earth? the planet of an alien infestation, Call says they need to blow up the ship, but Christy gets all pissed and says, Not as long as they're on it. Yeah, dude, obviously do uh, it after you get off. Why you gotta be so pissed all the time? On their way back to the dock to escape in the Betty, Ripley 8 finds a door very helpfully marked 1 through 7. She walks one, inside. 1 to through 7. I thought that'd be 1 7. Cabinet of curiosities. It's all uh, the USM's failed attempts to clone Ripley and the Queen Alien. Those are her. Most of which are I'm sorry, was that Itadorian suit? She finds one of the cloned attempts still alive on life support, and when it asks Ripley 8 to kill, Killer, the Alpha clone complies, torching that one as well as all the other but tests. But eight's not the Alpha I've clone. I guess it's just the best. Kill count because I feel like that's getting messy. So we'll just stick to fully formed humans and synthetics for now. I don't know what route they're taking to get to the dock, but apparently it goes through the room where all those captives were getting face hugged. We see five dead bodies here with holes in their chest. Obviously or are they the looking for Chesty the chestbursters the extended family? So that's another five that go up on the list. Ripley finds a sixth dude, but it turns out he's alive. He's an overacted character named Purvis who really feels like name one of those what? NPCs in a game that you wind up failing. The mission over after you kill them for being so annoying. Looking at you, Boris from Goldeneye. Purvis doesn't pass through no the smell test since she announces he has one of them inside him. What's it fucking inside me? Uh, you want to find Chill. out? Ripley tells him, and the group decides to take him along and freeze him on the Betty with the hope that doctors can fix him in the future after they unfreeze him. You know, but the old Walt Disney special. When the route takes wouldn't him he to just a big end ladder, up like Ripley? ditches his chair and straps onto Christie's back for a little reverse master blaster action. The ship is flooding with water from cooling tanks, possibly something the aliens did, which is a ridiculous thing to think about. But actually, it's okay. Because when Ren tells uh, them to swim the kitchen to get to a freight elevator, it begins the coolest sequence in the movie, hands down. All of them dive in and start swimming. Although Ripley's got some questionable form going on. The thing about that is, puppy where are they going to get in oxygen fact, from? These actors They're... all trained for weeks to be able to do this for real. That's actually yeah. them swimming, and I think that's freaking awesome. Oh, yeah, no, that is really cool. On the fun too, though. But then again, after the group in a real terrifying like, manner. in a cave or something. Like, 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 her foot and pulls her back into the water where she presumably drowns and or gets bitten by the xenomorph for our 20 second kill. Everyone else makes it to the other side, but turns out someone left the pool cover on. Oh, so they're not no. able to surface at first. When they finally break on through to the other side, they find themselves surrounded by a bunch of alien eggs. But yeah, like they don't know how long it's going to take. One of wow. which pounces onto Ripley and sinks her down into the water. The rest of the humans dive under again. Yeah, they're like, the I'm out bait, of here. Christy uses a grenade launcher to launch a couple of nades near the eggs. They blow up like a bazillion freaking times. Are all these but how many are there? Two grenades? 
blades? Is it the same explosion? Or maybe there's something angles? in the room? No. I don't Slippy know. He bites the face hugger off, and everyone bites gets it? out of the pool to start climbing up the ladder in the freight elevator shaft. At the top, Ren has some problems opening a door, so he gets Call's gun from her and promptly shoots her in the tummy. She does a high dive belly flop into the pool below, where she sinks to the bottom like the Nevermind baby. Ren makes his like mustache twirling getaway and locks the door behind him, leaving the rest of the group to deal with a xenomorph that jumps out of the water and starts pursuing them up the ladder. The alien is able to spray some acid into Christy's face, which starts melting and is a real problem for both him and Breeze, who's still hey. strapped onto his back. They swap places oh, no. as the alien oh, grabs okay. his foot and tries to pull him down. Get off my foot, bitch! Donor pulls a real Tomb Raider looking move and ends up shooting the alien in the head, so it dies with a big explosion. That's actually because the sick. only good bug is the dead bug, he also shoots a spider that spooked him on the ladder. But the alien corpse just won't let go of Christy's foot, and instead of just shaking it off, he unstraps himself from Breeze's back. Oh, yeah, and don't even to try. His presumable death, probably drowning or whatever. Honestly, seems like the dude just kind of gave up there. The door and now the paraplegic guy the is the one climbing the ladder. It turns out Winona Ryder got a call back, and she's here to save the day. DeStefano assumes she survived via body armor, but Ripley 8 investigates further and finds out that Call isn't a person. She's a goddamn robot. A second what? gen robot, meaning she's a robot who was designed by goddamn robots. The Autons, as they're called, <laughs> are robot against made Tommy by robots. Hiding. DeStefano gets fucking pumped about it, like he's selling meth in a junkyard. <laughs> Man, I ne never, never thought that I would see one. Call sticks oh. a wire from the ship into her arm I and guess. starts reading out the ship's diagnostics. You can't make the ship self-destruct anymore because they don't have enough energy left, so instead they set a course for the ship to just uh, crash into Earth. It seems a bit irresponsible to crash a ship into Earth, but I mean, hey, what do I know? I what? live here. Ripley I guess they just want to try and get things, whatever like they can recover whatever, whatever they want. That could be a bad thing, while Jean-Pierre Jeunet shines a ring light directly into Winona Ryder's eyes. When Ripley 8 helps patch her up, Call makes clear she's got some people envy going on. At least there's part of you that's human. I'm just... <sighs> Look at me. I'm You're disgusting. a doubly robot. Girl, you need some self love. They're not far from the dock when Ripley 8 decides she needs to get the fact that they're carrying her awesome. and then she's pulled down beneath it. She crowd surfs the sea of Xeno, but she ends up sliding down. So Call and Purvis leave her and just pray for a quick death. As the Origa approaches Earth, the crew gets back on the Betty. But before they're able to put Purvis to cryo this bed, is... he gets shot in the chest by Ren, who then takes Call hostage. While Ren delivers an evil monologue, Purvis starts to show, and then he charges at Ren like a zombie. I don't know when uh, chestbursters began giving their host superpowers, but Purvis survived. I mean, they kind of did with and then beats Ripley. The crap out of Ren. I just want to stress how stupid this is to me. However, I can almost forgive the whole mess because of the kills it gives us. Purvis gives a death yell that reaches the chest burster inside him, which then pops out of his chest and through uh, Ren's head. Oh, us a chest that's actually head kind of cool. Tumor. Definitely a highlight of this movie. To make sure that everyone might be the bloody threesome chainsaw. is dead for sure, the others all unload on them close range. Hey, look, Gediman is still alive. Apparently having been reserved by the aliens for, like, energy. There's also a few Origa crew members in the chamber with him who I think uh, we can add to the list. By the I alien three. queen. Let's call it three, although it is kind of hard to tell. Gettyman tells Ripley 8 that the alien queen has also absorbed some human DNA and has created a more perfect union of cells because she has uh, a human reproductive system now. I don't know how much of an upgrade that is. I think most women I know would rather lay I, a few eggs than go through, uh, well, go through this. But go through it, she does. And out pops and, this monstrous abomination. Uh, uh, He's got human DNA. He's got Xeno DNA. And he is one bad, ugly dude. He also has a bit of a temper. Looks like something out of straight up what, Resident Evil jaw. I guess he's a bigger fan four? of his people's side. The newborn comes to Ripley what 8 one to have a fondness for licking her up and down with affection pretty gross but i take it over what the newborn what does the one that you're in spain he approaches and snaps at literally biting off the top of his head it's an awesome kill for an awesomely creepy so character. basically it was the keeping him there for food start the for the up baby pilot her off got it ripley 8 manages to escape the nursery down there and run her way to the ship where she jumps across the chasm to get aboard sounds because like the perfect can. time for a snappy joss whedon line i thought you were dead yeah i get that a lot no you don't you've been alive for like a day who would have told you that ripley 8 <laughs> takes you also control, died like 200 years ago it's okay the ship Call checks on it since she's a paranoid android, and she finds out the problem is the newborn, who somehow made his way onto the Betty in a mimicry of the final sequences in the first two. Hey, what's it he gonna... hopefully shuts the cargo door for them at least, so Ripley 8 manages to pilot the Betty out of the Origa. After Call rolls her way into a hiding spot away from the inquisitive newborn, DeStefano comes uh, around to is check it fine? He instead finds the oh. newborn who grabs him with his giant hands and straight up crushes oh, his head with a the eyes. kill the movie. Tight, 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 yeah! Ripley 8 then goes to the back to see what's going on, and she Bad finds things. her grandbaby fondling Call's face. Guess he takes after his creepy grandma. Is this that Ripley the grand baby? probably have an awesome line here, calling back to the famous quote in Aliens, no. right? Put it down. Or it could be not awesome at all. Cool. Ripley 8 shows the newborn how creepy face touching is really done, and they just, uh, I don't know, man, they just kind of rub faces against each other for a while. This is making me very uncomfortable. She puts mm. an end to, you know, whatever this is, by taking some blood from her hand and whipping it onto a space window. A hole burns through, and some violent decompression oh. starts, which pulls the newborn up against the breach. It howls in pain at the pro it, it's... it's experiencing and struggles to get away 
away from. I guess it would get sucked. Suction is too yeah. much, and the newborn gets pulled through the hole little by little I think inside it, out. Technically, that's cool kind of how it would be. Although the CGI guts in space aren't great, but all the practical stuff inside the ship is fucking gruesome and gross in the best of ways. Ripley cries as she watches it all end with a big finale via the uh, newborn skull breaking apart through the window. Hell oh, yeah, the newborn's not okay. The what about the rest of it? Accident, since the Origa continues on its collision course with Earth, a speaker system on the ship counts down until the impact, which kills the xenomorphs on board with a giant nuclear explosion. I've heard <laughs> that this crash was in an uninhabited part of Africa, but you know what? That would what be a massive explosion. At night. Finally, the Betty is able to break through Earth's atmosphere, which gives Colin Ripley aid a nice view out the window. Joner celebrates by grabbing Breeze and kissing him, since inappropriate okay. face touching is a theme of this movie, I guess. Colin and Ripley look down at Earth, which doesn't look like that much of a shithole to me. And Call wonders it looks aloud very what normal. happens next. I don't know. I'm a stranger here myself. Yeah, you're a stranger to all of us, too. Because uh, you're not Ripley, damn it. The, but while the uh, movie only character well, uh, assassinated Ripley, it actually assassinated a bunch of other characters. A lot. Let's find not as much as the third the one. Not as much as the third one. What? You, you thought this was going to attack me? No. Or it's just a stuffed animal. James. By he has a lot of fun with these. Humans died in Alien Resurrection, the most of the original series. Hill Wait, Arthur really? Chestburster victims from the Betty. Were I guess the I had what, one I more. With the rest of the victims being men, but it's hard to know with some of those group deaths. Resurrection also had the shortest runtime of the series at 109 minutes, so that gives it a kill on average every 3.63 minutes, which is also the most frequent of the series. Other yeah. than the Golden Chainsaw for coolest It's going to be the collateral, yeah. Purvis and Ren. I love the combo factor to it. Chest bursting and head biting are the two most iconic ways the Xenomorphs somebody, kill people. You know somebody's just like, at the meeting, just like, what if we combine, combine because I feel like the two most the the face, popular he things? Right. Guess he just couldn't hang in there. And that's it. Alien Resurrection came out in Like, what if we combine? People love chest bursting. People love Headbutts. Series. What if we combine there were them? talks of a fifth alien movie, they got set aside when the Alien vs. Predator movie started happening, which I'm sure I'll get to one day. I and imagine. That's, that's how I've heard of Alien. a killer snowman on our horizon with Jack Frost. We're then, doing mean, things killing least, first, but... It's been the kill count. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching my kill count for Alien Jack Resurrection. Frost. Another series down. How you guys feeling? You guys ready for some Jack Frost and Black Christmas? I hope you enjoyed the Thanksgiving special I gave you. What do they I'll do to the snowman? I'll try specials when I can. I like doing holiday specials, I just don't always have the time for them. Speaking of which, I got another little bonus video coming for you tomorrow so make sure you tune in for it also we passed 300k that's awesome hope you had a he, nice and safe thanksgiving i don't know how many he's at now but he definitely deserved more than 300,000 subscribers at this point but this was alien 3 and alien resurrection that thing in the thumbnail is it, it reminds me of uh the regenerator from i want to say it's resident evil 4 i want to say it's resident evil 4 i've actually played all the remakes for resident evil i believe the resident evil 2 my first experience with resident evil the resident evil 2 remake is on uh this channel and a playlist that's actually one of the oldest plays actually some of the oldest videos on this channel uh and then i think the other ones i didn't upload resident evil 1 because my god i did not enjoy that but resident evil 3 that's on the gaming channel and i believe resident Evil 4 is also on the gaming channel which i actually recently streamed that but i'm playing uh delta rune right now at 5 p.m so that's going to be awesome if you're watching this video the moment it goes live i'm probably live streaming so 30 minutes after this video goes live i will be uh live streaming delta rune i started it last week kind of been enjoying it it's a very interesting game first time playing like a turn-based rpg game other than pokemon obviously but this is alien 3 and alien resurrection i look forward to watching thanks killing i look forward to reading your comments as well because i read every single one of them i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day but until next video take care and keep the music we were